Yeah. <laughs> All right, hey everybody, welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted Podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter. We have the legend, Guy Metzger, in the building. This is uh, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> legend, huh? You're, I'm, I'm, well, you're let me a explain you about legends. I'm actually not a legend. This is when you get legend status. Okay. It's going to be slightly embarrassing, but I'll go ahead and share with you guys. My wife... I don't know if you guys are married or not, but... I just got uh, married last week. No, I stay, to you. I yes. stay single. Um, walk out. Go on. So my wife uh, is telling me to take the trash out. Of course, you know, I said, why are you bugging me? I've already told you I didn't do it ten times. Let me get to it, right? Doorbell rings. I go answer the door. It's a Federal Express guy. I have to sign for this package. He said, how do you spell your last name? I go, M-E-Z-G-R. He goes, Mesker? I said, yeah. He goes, are you Guy Mesker? I go, yeah. He goes, oh my God, you're a legend. Oh, this is great. Oh, I can't believe this. I'm, Oh, thanks. And my wife walks up, takes the trash from him. The legend has to take out the trash. Oh, wow. So you're not a legend, so you don't have to take the trash out. That's no, how I look at it. No way. Legends don't take trash out. That's all I got to say. I just means you're a legendary wife uh, <laughs> as well. Yeah, my wife's a, a legendary legend. ball master. <laughs> yes. We also have Hanato Laranja, a 27 time yeah. world champion. Speaking of legend porn. Yeah, how are you? By the way, uh, yeah, how's yeah. everything going? How was your week? Hey, everything is going okay, my brother. I, you know, it's, I've been battered all that fucking drive over here. You know, try, this guy is trying to do the GPS and talking to Siri and he don't understand his, his Jewish accent over here and then uh, and then meanwhile he's like I gotta keep the AC off so that Siri can fucking hear me yeah. he's doing it uh, 20 times to give me the direction the, turn the fucking one the AC on that's, that did happen <laughs> I did, for some reason my Siri doesn't work and my air is on and then I turn it off then I'm sweating and then it still didn't work when you turn it off yes that's true so I gotta sit so, here I gotta sweat my balls off over here. so your GPS tracking doesn't work when your air conditioning's on but when I'm talking the air is like it's right below like the air comes out and then people can't hear it it gets yeah. muffled it's like if someone calls I have turn my air off because uh, he insists on doing the thing where he, she has to hear what he's saying and she can't hear shit you know Siri it's gonna be one one two five seven blah 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 she, she can't understand well, so what this fucking guy's saying Siri's a woman she doesn't understand this anyway. is true it doesn't matter she how don't know where speak. the fuck she's going thank you guy all right now, <laughs> now now guy what have you been up to man what have I been up to um well I'm assuming since fight, quit fighting you yes mean? um well uh, what have I did well I was um, most of you guys know that I was actually the president of H&M fights um, Mark Cuban um, bought my uh, consulting business um, oh, and yeah. um, basically talked him into um, the MMA business. It was actually a pretty cool deal. He, he calls me up. I, actually, what happened was is, uh, I was consulting for uh, a group called Art of War, a bunch of clowns out of Dallas. They did a bunch of idiots. <laughs> And, tell, uh, tell us how you feel about those guys. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I, 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 calling them idiots is nice. And uh, fucking idiots might be a Yeah, you could say that okay, stuff. You say fucking idiots? Okay. You allow it, for whatever you want here. Yeah, they're a bunch of fucking idiots. Right. And, uh, but I, I made the connection with, uh, 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 with Ron and other guys at HCNet. Uh, basically, doing a last minute saving um, the, this company's idiotic uh, deal. And... Um, so they asked me, uh, they flew me out to Colorado where, where their uh, main office is, and we basically discussed the idea of putting MMA on the station. And I had done a perspective on this before, and um, I basically said, hey, listen, I can charge you $5,000 for this perspective, or I said, I'll just give it to you. I said, but if I give it to you, I would like to be included in what's going on because I think that we can really make something on MMA. And... Um, and of course, UFC is just starting to get the wheels turning in the right direction, you know. And um, so uh, they said, "Great, we will." I didn't hear from them for like two months. I went, "Awesome!" They, <laughs> they didn't do it. I said, "What a great spill I did. Should have collected the five thousand dollars, right?" But I get a phone call from Mark Cuban, and he's like, "Hey, guy, this is Mark. Like we're old yeah. guys, right? Like we've been sitting around hanging out at the pool or something." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, hey, Mark, what's going on?" He goes. Hey man, I want you to jump on a plane and uh, and uh, fly out to Vegas if you can, when you can, because I'm out here with the NBA stuff, and I would love to talk to you more about the the, the uh, MMA stuff. I thought it was one of my staff because we always yeah, do these fairly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we do these fairly elaborate practical jokes. Right. right. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> oh, like yeah, you did it to that. Yeah. yeah. And then Mark comes back laughing, and he goes, No, seriously, it's Mark Cuban. I was like. Seriously? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Please don't hang out. And I was like, I, I started laughing. And it was a good laugh. And so, literally, I flew out the next day, met up with Mark, and um, we, uh, it was supposed to be like an hour meeting, and 
you know, Mark is very uh, enthusiastic and very um, uh, energy driven. And, uh, you know, we got him real motivated, and he was just like, it turned into be a five-hour meeting. Wow. And then Andrew Simon, who's still with uh, Access TV, runs, run, or he, he's run, runs as the CEO, and he was there. He was working for another company at the time. He, you know, Mark ran it by him. It was great. Mark says, hey, would you like to work here? Guy, would you like to be this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, well, you missed your flight going back home. He goes, why don't you stay, uh, stay the night here, and I'll just fly back on my plane in the morning. I said, cool. By the way, spending a night in Vegas as a billionaire is a lot more fun. Yeah, I don't imagine. <laughs> I don't imagine. Right. Now, it's you a little bit more fun. Gambling, you go to strip clubs. What do you guys do? Uh, well, I, I, well, come on. You, yeah, you, I really this can't. fucking guy over yeah. here. Statue of limitations. Right. Right. Okay. Statue of limitations not quite done on some of the yeah. stuff. So. Okay. It was it was enough to buy this, through stuff. This fucking guy always trying to get people killed by their wife. Yeah. I'm just wondering what happened. He said it's a fun as a billionaire. In yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, tell me about that. All right, so it was fun. So, uh, so anyway, so that started uh, HCNet, and I did that for uh, five years. I went to school back then, and I, I finished my uh, my degree in, in medicine. And, um, and medicine, yeah. What I'm kind of medicines they let you do? <laughs> actually, not that much. But uh, you were smoking some natural medicine over there <laughs> when you had your long hair. <laughs> <laughs> you, went, you went to, med you went to med med medical hair. school? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. And, and, and uh, but I, I got. Um, my PhD, not not, not uh, MD, right? And um, basically, I'm a medical scientist, and uh, but I am involved. I'm also a naturopathic doctor, and I'm uh, involved in medical practice. So You're a psychologist. <laughs> No, um, uh, <laughs> you'd be an interesting case if we did. I can't imagine, imagine that. I I got a a lot of personality. Yes. Wait. So so, on, so, so back when Mark bought you out, I mean, it was millions that he did. No, no, no. It was like wasn't that bad. It was just a basically. It was just a. Uh, a bonus to start the job, and um, and so because uh, it wasn't, you know, it, my consulting business consisted of me. Right. It wasn't like he was buying a whole bunch right. of assets, you know. But I like that. Uh, I like what they have at Access TV. I yeah. think they do a pretty good job. They do a really good job. They, yeah. they should have kept what's his name. I don't know why he left. Uh, the guy from Australia. Uh, oh, yeah. The I'm voice. Not yeah, the voice. Oh, Sha yes. Yeah, so. I don't know why Chevelle left. He was yeah. great. I I'm not quite know. sure either, to be honest. Um, I've been out. Yeah, I haven't dealt with uh, them in a long time. You know, it was it was a great experience though. But I, I went and when um, then when HDNet uh, merged with Access TV, um, it was just a good time for me to leave. You know, we, we were the number one um, programming on the station, and we were we had really good reviews on what we were doing. And and uh, I enjoy TV and everything, but it's not really my thing. You know, I want to do something different. And um, and I tell you, you want you want to you know you're newly married here. You want to test the bounds of the relationship. Tell yeah. your wife you're leaving. Them very lucrative job to start a medical practice. It might not make money for about four or five years. Mm, wow. Well, I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm a stand-up comedian. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, anything would be an improvement from that point. Exactly. Uh, very a stand-up comic. I know. So anyway, uh, now where did you grow up? Well, mostly Dallas. Mostly Dallas. And you were you started karate and kickboxing. I was a wrestler, actually. A wrestler? Yeah. You wrestled in high school, college? Yeah, both. Oh, what college well, did you wrestle for? Uh, so I wrestled uh, Southern Illinois, um, Edwardsville. Oh, nice. Did where? where you, 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 that was in Japan, Sonomoy? What, what is that? <laughs> Southern what Illinois. Said, oh, I thought you said Sonomoy, pro hustling. So, Southern We're Illinois. We're talking about J Japan pro hustling over here. And then when did you first uh, link up with the Lions then? Oh, uh, well, that happened. Um, okay, well. Well, what happened to karate class? You're just skipping all that shit? Yeah, because I always thought you were your background was karate. I didn't realize wrestling was your background. Well, I mean, I, I, I started wrestling. Um, actually, you want to hear a quick story about how I got into wrestling? Um, I was eight years old, 1976. None of you guys were alive then, uh, except for you. Take it easy over here. The he ageless one. Back then. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, ageless, the ageless one over here was around, but the You're rest gonna of you guys. are going to give a lot of women a heart attack out there. I told them a lot of different shit. <laughs> All right, go on. <laughs> Sorry out there. So, uh, so uh, the Rocky movie came out. Yes. And it was an amazing movie. You mean Hockey 3? Because there wasn't no fucking hustling in the first one. <laughs> yeah, Rocky 3 had Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thunder Lips, okay? Right, go on. The ultimate man versus the ultimate meatball. Yes. All right, go on. <laughs> it, it was an amazing movie. And uh, everyone was cheering on it. Just, I mean, I was one of those kids that just on the chairs cheering. Like, it was, like, it was the best. Yeah, we beat up the black guy. Like, yeah, yeah, we can finally like, have a white guy going to win. <laughs> Oh yeah, there was a fantasy story about a white boy being a heavyweight champ back then. But no, no. Uh, anyway, so I was going to be a boxer, right. and back then, you know, every every rec center had boxing, and so I uh, joined the boxing team at the local rec center. About three weeks into it, coach said, "Hey, you wanna you wanna spar?" I said, "Of course, I wanna spar." I'm <laughs> Balboa. 
Boom, I got, I got hit right in the nose. And my nose bled like crazy. Fuck. Wouldn't stop for a full day. The very next day, I joined the wrestling. Oh, man. <laughs> nice. Like, ah, that was that. But, but how did you get back into kickboxing and karate? Well, actually, karate helped out. Karate helped out with it because um, I, uh, I was kind of a, I wouldn't say a troubled youth, but I was a rambunctious one. Right. And uh, my mom's boss, a uh, great guy named uh, Stephen Parker, Dr. Stephen Parker. He, great guy. He um, suggested that maybe I sh should also do karate on top of wrestling. Oh wow! And uh, so, uh, so he took me to karate program, and it was a great program. I mean, the karate school I was at had uh, five world champions that you know that competed, uh, world kickboxing champions. And, what karate and, program? I don't remember. In the seventies, it was a, what channel was that? Pro that one? No, not the program. Like the karate, the actual program he was in, not the, a TV program. Exactly, but what program was you on? What, what style you mean? The Chuck Norris? Oh, no, no. Uh, more like Kung Fu. More like... Uh, more like da uh, David Carradine. Yeah, more like yeah. David Carradine. The, the legend continues. Okay, so I'm trying okay. to get a uh, heel sense of this. Okay, cool. Okay. So, then, so, okay, so you, you finished wrestling in college, and how did you do in wrestling? Uh, I did all right. I mean, mainly, uh, I, I didn't finish college at that point. You know, I got kicked out. And... Um, For what? Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, here you go again. Well, <laughs> no, I'm not, kidding. Okay, I'm not, what did you get kicked out for? Well, actually, what happened? What happened in? Uh, what happened in, with wrestling was um, I was actually shot in a drive-by. For you? Yeah, for real. And what, uh, where? What? What? In Illinois? Area? No, I was shot in. Um, I was in Indiana. I was visiting a girl in Indiana. God, are you? What luck to you get shot in a drive-by in fucking Indiana? That's a new one. Uh, actually, the Indiana had a lot of gang stuff going on. That that was a crazy thing. You would think, no, it wouldn't. But Gary Indiana well, had a lot of gang things gangs? going on. You know, actually, it was a bunch of guys acting like Crips and Bloods, actually. Wow. Well, and was, uh, yeah, and so I, and they weren't actually shooting at me. They were shooting at some other guys. And uh, I just, me and, my, me and my buddies were in the way, and we got shot. It wasn't that Where'd you bad. get shot? In the knee. And, um, yeah, I got shot a couple times too, you know. I know how it is, man. Stop out there. Yeah. And who shot you? Ah, you know something. Hey, let's it's not get into it. Hey, he's Brazilian, so it'd be his ex-girlfriend. Hey, right. <laughs> I've been known to Was it Eddie Bravo? I've been known to dab one there. Was it Vinnie Magalhães? No, but Vinnie Magalhães is gonna get shot if he's not careful hunting his fucking mouth. And I saw what happened in Poland to you, Vinnie Magalhães, and I'm keepy chab. All right, I'm keepy score. So okay, so you got shot in the leg. So wrestling season was done then. Right? Yeah, and then so. Um, it was actually, to be honest, I was cutting so much weight back then that I was actually happy. When you're happy to be shot, <laughs> once, I realized, <laughs> this once, is once I realized that I wasn't hurt that bad, I was like, I, wow. I can make weight. Oh, wow. my God. Cause wow. I, cause, see, I, I signed my letter of a 10 in wrestling at 157 pounds. But, you see, I was real young. I, was, I just turned 17 when, when I finished wrestling season. And then, so by the time I started, uh, started school back, I'd actually grown two inches, and I was walking around at, at a lean hundred. I mean, the same same height I am now, but I was 185 pounds. So if you give an idea, right now, I'm uh, 200 pounds, and so you know you could tell that you know 15 pounds less, I was a little real thin. Right. And it was a tough it was a tough break uh, cut to, uh, from 185 to uh, 57. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, so uh, I was grateful, you know, and so they had, back then they didn't have the protective scholarships like they do now, you know, and um, so uh, they, uh, I, they put me on a house scholarship and I couldn't do that. So I actually took an academic scholarship to Texas Tech and uh, went to school at Texas Tech for a year. But um, then um, I hit a guy and put him in a coma for three days. And, uh, oh, hold up. What do you mean you hit a guy? Like a random, you got into a fight? Yeah, I got into a fight. Where? Uh, bar. Uh, actually... Okay, so it was a long story. But <laughs> I like how you're just like, well, then I got shot, and then uh, no, but you, I, you I, gloss I like over. I, I hit a guy, and then I got he was in a coma. I like this. Well, what happened was, uh, what happened was. Are you uh, as detailed as like a doctor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If so, I'm not going to your practice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go on. No, but what, what happened was is that, uh, in long story short, it was this guy that was always causing trouble for me, and um, he would never fight himself, but you know he's a member of a fraternity, right? So he oh. called his uh, fraternity sisters up, and okay. and it would be, uh, you know, and. And, and so it, it was like miserable for me, you know. I mean, going, trying to go to school there, you know, with this, this this jackass. And so I'm out one night, and I had a date, which was very few and far between back then. And like, so I'm having a really good time with this girl, and in the watch this jackass. I'm like, no, nah, man. And I said, not tonight. And so back then we didn't have cell phones, right? So this is in the '80s, and um, so I knew where he was going to head. He's heading over to the payphone. So I cut to the dance floor, and I met him there, and I was like, oh, tonight. Put him in a coma, three days. Three days yeah. So then you got kicked off. 
out, out of Texas Tech. Yeah, I lost my scholarship there for that, Damn. and I got kicked out. And so uh, that's when I decided to become a professional fighter. So now you got you got kicked out of two schools. You got shot. <laughs> two in the scholarships. Legs, two scholarships. Your parents must be fucking thrilled. Oh yeah. man, my, my mom was excited. Yeah, you. But Frank Shamhawk goes, "Hey, you're just the kind of guy we." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That, so then, yeah. Uh, then how oh, do sorry, you? Not Frankie. Uh, Ken. Fucking Ken. Ken. So Ken how Shamhawk. do you find the lions then? Is that when you actually? Found no, them? no, no. I. Uh, this is still in the eighties, guys. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like eighty six, something like that. Eighty six, eighty seven. Um, God, I. How and old so, are you, my brother? How old am I? Yeah, yeah, I'm old. Yeah. I'm forty nine. Forty nine. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I'm an old man. But you still uh, look good, my brother. You still, you got like a, you remind me like Mark Harmon or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, you have a Mark Harmon. I just, Harman. I just yeah, watched yeah. the Presidio the other day. Summer school is my favorite. Time. Summer school is great. Yeah, yeah. But he, yeah, you have that. It's like your season, but you still you know how to do what you got to do. So you have a couple <laughs> amateur fights. Do you go right pro? No, I mean I, I've been fighting. Um, I, I've been, uh, I, you know, I, I fought in karate. I was actually state national and world karate champion from age fourteen. To, well, like Kempo, Shotgun, or one of them. Well, it was open. I mean, the tournaments were open. I mean, it was. But for uh, you, what was your style? Oh, uh, it was. Uh, well, it was Chung Kwan, but it was more of a Texas uh, American style karate, you know. Oh, like that kind from uh, Foot Fist way, like Kenya. <laughs> yes. Kenya. It's exactly the way. But you know how they actually, have... actually, that's pretty close to it. Yeah, in the south, you know, when you got those shit kicker, like I can imagine what a shit kicker. Uh, you know, Wonder Boy. Yeah. Stephen yeah. Johnson. Imagine his father back in the day fucking people up. You know what I mean? They call that guy the the, 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 the baddest man in South Carolina. Yeah. Because he was just using karate and fucking up people. But, you know, imagine that. Like, those kind of shit kicks. So, how many? Uh, so, so did you have any amateur? So you had no amateur? You went right pro, basically, for MMA? No, no. Oh, in MMA, there wasn't yeah. any amateur. Yeah. Oh, so, so you did. That's some, a new development. So you, but you I, was also, I was also a pro. I mean, I, I was a pro kickboxer. But people don't realize I had, like, over 60 fights as a, as a, as a professional fighter. I had over 65 as a professional fighter uh, before I stepped in the UFC. And so. Uh, you want to put that in a different position? Is that the best uh, position for this guy? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out. I mean, maybe, you know, like put it so it's like. Yeah, hold it. Yeah, hold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't want people to go, I couldn't hear him at all. Then, well, no, they get mad at me. That's going to happen. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Well, because we don't have the, the, the fucking thing. Right, you can't right. tell. All right, so go on. So. Anyway, so okay, so we're talking about the about USA. All right, yeah, well, I, I fought in boxing and kickboxing and, and uh, full contact karate. Um, you know, for a number of years, and really what was happening was I had a lot of accolades. Like, I won the World Full Contact Karate Championship twice, yeah, and uh, I was number one rated kickboxer, but, you know, I wasn't making any money, you know. No and, money. Yeah, not really. I mean, 50000 a year? Oh, I mean, not even, not even. Yeah, yeah I remember the and, days, uh, full, ta full Contact Capoeira, you know, I was in there. And how much did you make? Sure. Oh, God, I, back then we wasn't making much. <laughs> But it was the, the, the his fact we got. Anyway, right. I don't want to take right. away from what this guy is talking okay, about. Okay, go on. So 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 you were, you had won numerous world titles. Well, I won. Yeah, I won. I won the that. Uh, and it How's was he gonna have like, one fucking numerous world title? He had numerous. It's not just one of that one. I know. So you won the world kickboxing. I mean, I, well, I, I won that eventually. I mean, I, I wasn't. I was number one rated at the time. Kickboxing. I won the world full contact karate championship. Um, and, With the uh, long hair that you have. Uh, yes, I had long hair. Locks? I grew it up. I, I started growing it up then. But, look, but, look I mean, up people, no, I mean, the flowing locks, as you put it. I know. Oh, I mean, it might be a little disturbing how you put that. You used to look <laughs> like the guy from Extreme. Oh, huh. Right. You know, more than words. Yes. Um, but were they, they were, were they televised, <laughs> these championships? Uh, no, I don't think so. So, did it, I mean, were you, were you getting respect in the karate uh, world? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, cover of was, karate magazines and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Not so much that. I mean, you I got a couple of things like that, but mostly, you know, it was like, you know, the karate world is is dead. You know what I mean? I mean, even in the '80s, it was very exclusive just to that. I mean, if you were involved in martial arts, you would know some of these things. But if yeah. you weren't, you you know, there wasn't any crossover. And kickboxing was basically dead in the '90s for the most part until the K1 came around. Mm -hmm. And then so you had a little ISK shit. You yeah. Know, with, uh, so yeah, I fought like that. I, I fought. Did you world. fight those guys? You, like, yeah. Uh, I, I actually, like I actually Johnny won. Chariot and fucking. Uh, oh no, they they were a little bit past my prime. I mean, I I, I had uh, uh, Anthony Almos was one of my. Like, he we were lined up to fight, but um, Edward James point, Almost. Who the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Who? Not Edward Anthony, James Almost. Anthony, Anthony, oh, okay. Anthony. Okay, go Anthony on. Was, he was a world champ. He wow. wouldn't fight without leg kicks then, and at that point I was doing leg kicks. And, and oh, were you offered any kind of like movies as far as like like you know like Van Damme or Seagal? Or those nah. Like, no. See, really? Because how how they fucking gonna offer a little guy? That's bullshit. How come they weren't giving you that? 
You know, I, seen, I didn't have the right age. On unbelievable. Him, and he had the hair, which was the key. The hair, the hair was, yeah, the hair worked. Wait till you see this. So, all right, so, so you're not making worked. any money doing karate, but you're the best in the world. Uh, he, he was the boxing. best around because You're the best around. No, yeah. Nothing could stop and keep you down. Well, so, so, so did you, um, so then what, now the MMA thing. Right? Well, that, that came about because basically what happened was it was like, I was like 25 when I saw the UFC. And um, I was like, having to come to a kind of a crossroads. What am I gonna do with myself? You know, you get that age of 25, and even though, you know, when you're my age, you think, oh my gosh, you have forever, right? You know, back then you think, oh my gosh, I'm 25, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think you're old and shit, but I know, I oh, know yeah. that feeling. I'm like sitting there being depressed. Yeah. I remember I was in Mexico, you know, on my birthday, going, oh my God, I'm 25, I'm such a loser. <laughs> now you would kill to be fucking 25. Yeah. So, basically, <laughs> when I saw the UFC, I was like, I could do that, you know? Because I was also, like I said, I was a high school All-American. I was an AAU All-American wrestler. I was the number one rated uh, kick, kick, kickboxer in the world. I was uh, also a national level judo player. So I had, like, I was watching these guys, and I thought, man, they're all one-dimensional. None of these guys have, you know, a huge amount of skill sets outside of their, their discipline. I said, I, I could beat these guys. And so I thought, okay, this is my game plan. I'll, get, I'll try to fight in the UFC. And because I knew they were going to close down the no rules format, you know what I mean? I knew that was going to be a thing of the past pretty quick. So you might as well kick some people in the nuts a little bit and stop some Exactly, make, make, make a name for myself. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to retire after winning this thing and, um, you know, just say, well, I'm the guy who fought in this crazy tournament. And then... Did they have weight classes you, yet? No, no, huh? Did yeah. you want it to be no rules or no? Me, I, I mean, okay, I prefer rules because I prefer being a sportsman. I, I prefer... I prefer having the at least the pretense of of, uh, of civility to things, you know. Um, I'm better with the no rules. I mean, if it comes down to it, you know. I mean, I'm I mean, I'm an old school martial arts guy, you know. What I mean, and so it's you like you're gonna hit somebody. Yeah, yeah, I, hit him my, I catch him with that claw. The tiger that claw. Boom! It's done. I do my door hedge hand, my fan. Yeah, the tiger claw is illegal for me. Well, UFC. also this, the trachea. But your your first fight was the, which is UFC four. Yeah, that was UFC four. Now I was. Intimacy has fought in that, and so we, okay, so the same like promoter Intimacy? At the time, what was that? Anthony Macias. Oh, I thought you said Intimacy. I was like, is that a black no, Anthony, fighter? Yeah, you yeah. know how they, like, guys have one name? Oh, you know, even comedians are like, oh, uh, the Intimacy. Or, you know what I said? <laughs> you, mean, you, you didn't make a name for a fighter, Intimacy? Well, no, no. Yeah, I didn't. Well, that I would didn't make grappling was, really uncomfortable. Yeah, I, you, that I, makes I, a grappling uncomfortable I didn't there. thought it was a fighter. I, I, that's why I said, oh, that's He already tells you, like, little secrets in well, your ears. Yeah, I, you know, in fact. Yeah, he wrestles with his eyes closed as he clutches it. Yeah, Closer than you, and he closes his eyes. That's intimacy. Yeah. That's not a bad name. Imagine now, you're thinking about a black guy. Yeah, like that Rampage guy. versus yeah. intimacy. Yeah, just intimacy. Yeah, mayhem uh, versus intimacy. All right, go on. <laughs> so, so UFC four. So UFC yeah, four, yeah. So Anthony, okay, the site promoter at the time, guy named Buddy Alvin, he promoted uh, fights of mine and Anthony's um, mostly to the southeast area, and uh, he was running it for the UFC. And what are you so, checking over there? I'm taking sure you're on the camera. Oh, you want me to be on there? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. how much? You want, why don't you scoot him? Because I don't want to be like on, on you know. All right. I know he's a good looking guy over here, but poha caray. You know? I don't know. Right. You're, the one, you're the one with intimacy. All, All right. right, go on. I, got right. Inti I don't have intimacy uh, issue. Right? You have I don't a know bit. about this you guy. You have a little bit. You don't call girls back and stuff. Why? Well, it depends on the girl. When was the last time you called the girl back? I call him on the. Ch well, maybe I text that one. Okay. All right, go on. He usually calls him back at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, he's, he's, he's the worst. Oh, when I've, you know, I've, he tells girls off the bat. Listen, uh, we're not going to be have a relationship. I, you listen, why am I gonna lie to that one? Yeah. Like these other fucking hikai down out there, who's promised the world, and then they f take the feet out under the yeah. legs out from the table. Right. Go on. So. So you start off that way. He so tells everything, right so, up, so yeah. everything up there is just set, going but then, up. But then he yeah, wonders he why these here. girls don't want to hook up with them because because well, they're like I don't want to hook up like, with you. Yeah, then you wonder why they don't because they're like you tell them, listen, I, I'm not gonna call you back, and and, 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 and we're just gonna have sex. And then you wonder why they're they're like some well, of them don't respond. I, they, 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 the ones that he spawned is he spawned. By the way, were there any karate way. groupies back in the day or no? <laughs> Uh, there was a few kickboxing groupies back when I was kickboxing. Really? I mean, were you, were you, you were the best in the world. Were you just like, you had the long hair? Well, and... I had a girlfriend, and she uh, actually, my, my girlfriend's the one who promoted my fights. And so, uh, uh, she had actually... double, ugh. When, when like, uh, you got in a, like, a, you and you and her got in a fight, she said you up with, like, Chuck Norris or somebody that was like... Yeah, <laughs> she's gonna set you up with... How would you have done against Chuck Norris? Uh, come on, guys. I get that one all the time. Chuck Norris never fought. I love, and I worked for Chuck Norris. He actually, I went his, his uh... 
the World Combat League. I oh, actually yeah, yeah, yeah. got a form that together and I ran that form for a while. So you would have killed Chuck Norris? I mean, well, I, I, you know, Are we I talking about much, kickboxing or what? Yeah, yeah. I kickboxing. mean, you're talking, yeah. I mean, let's put it this way. Does it, the thing is, is that it's hard to compare guys like that because they never fought like we fought. It's a right? different They don't era. have the skill set. Yeah. yeah. Now, as an athlete and, 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 and as a martial artist, would he be able to learn that and do what? Yeah. If he was today, would he be a champion? Yeah, he'd be a champion. So it, it's not apples to apples. So That's you versus problem. prime Steven Seagal back when he was only two, <laughs> like 240. Uh, how, how do you do against Steven Seagal? <laughs> when he was like 240? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. That oh man, not even that, that would that would be so painful to answer because Why? people because he's such a clown, it's ridiculous. And and people are like people seriously this I mean this is this is the problem with our country. They actually think he's a badass. I mean our country I have people sit there so convinced. Oh dude, he I'm like But you no, see Mark for death against those Haitians? I mean they He took care of that Jamaican guys uh, yeah. uh, pretty good. I I, I don't, I don't wanna you know hang on your parade. But he has the ponytail too. Sometimes you have a jealousy. Do you, are you jealous of Steven Seagal? Yeah. <laughs> Look, he has probably, the hair. Probably that, that's what I am. What was the one where he he like was getting even? Uh, he was always. Oh, what was the movie where Steven Seagal? No, was but the, even? no, the one where he was like. Yeah, the one. Yeah, where, the one with that. Uh, yeah, no, but the one. Was like, the one, one and, no, but what was the one that was like? I actually liked the movie, but he was like. <laughs> It was his like cousin or something. They, I know actually, what you're talking actually, about. Actually, the very first Steven Seagal movie was really good. Everyone after that sucked. But well, the first uh, one was really I bet you differ. I think the one he's talking about is Out for Justice. Yeah, when he justice. did the best uh, it's uh, in America accent. <laughs> and this fucking guy's over here doing acting like a fucking you know, my jaw. He come yeah. and smack somebody up. Yeah, that was what I'm talking about. And then about. one of the fucking dumbest <laughs> shit. I love how they have in there, they tried to put in, uh, you, you saw that movie where he's oh, always like Italian-American? Yeah, you know? he always plays an Italian-American. Yeah, oh, but he's like, guy, oh, he's but you know what I mean? This one, he's a really <laughs> fucking Benson artist or whatever. Yeah. He's like, got an accent like this over here. And, and he comes in, he's, he's overdoing it. Was it was the worst villain, too. It was, a, yeah, and, and yeah, it was, uh, well, what was the fuck? Not Treat Williams, it was someone, <laughs> I can't hear. Yeah, it was horrible. Like Forsyth or whatever. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, and he goes into the fucking pool hall and he's talking shit to these guys. And then it's all these Italian mafia guys, right? And then they got a guy dressed up in a fucking. Um, they, they got uh, uh, Dan and, uh, and Assange. And oh, Assange. Yeah. Okay? But he looks a real Italian. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That's no, an Italian. Yeah, that, 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 so, so they got all these Italian. And then they got Dan and Assange in like a wig and a fucking uh, like Sergio Tacchini jumpsuit. Yeah. And like a <laughs> And then all just so that he can have a stick fight. <laughs> you know, with, uh, yeah. with fucking Segal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? But then they go, it's so contrived. They go like this, like he's fucking up everybody, and they go, hey, Sticks! <laughs> and, and fucking Sticks comes over and fucking. And it's the. the it, it's embarrassing, but it's also the best. It's, like, it's so bad, it's good. Uh, oh, beyond, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beyond good. No, I'm making fun of this shit at home. I own these movies. <laughs> in my collection. Okay? I got yeah, the same yeah. one. I got all the outrageous ones. I got the Mark for Death. Where you got the fucking Jamaican crew? I got the other one with the fucking guy. No, I actually, I, I, I saw like, outside of the first one was, I, I thought that was a good one, and the other ones were so painful. I, I literally had a hard time sitting through them. Yeah, I was. He did one good, good big budget. Guy. He did one big budget one that was good though. Like the biggest one he ever did was that one where he's on the fucking ship or whatever. Oh. What the? It's under siege. Under siege. Remember that was that like was a heel. Movie, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like with Tommy Lee Jones is the bad guy and shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he he did a good one where he was uh, he was a uh, anti-terrorist guy who gets killed by. Uh, Excuse me, I think it's I, I, I think it's anti-Muslim. Let's not <laughs> let's not to get uh, you know watch your P's and Q's over here. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a very sensitive time. Now, okay, all right. So, guy, uh, yeah. so you 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 win you guy some... show some his heck. Well, that is his fucking yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so you win is that like a nickname? Dr. Guy. So you win UFC 4 and 5. Why did you then go to uh, uh, Pancras? Um, well, so he could slap the shit out of people. <laughs> and wear a exactly. Hick James boots like uh, Bass would. I, I wanted, yeah. Well, I, first of all, I wanted to always be a superhero, and so I had my superhero costume, obviously. Yeah, no shit. Pancrase. Well, it was more yeah. a Hick James costume, but hey, like, who's counting? Go on. Hicks James, superhero. Yeah, yeah. Well, true. Yeah, he might have been a superhero to some, a lot of people. Yes, that's true. But, uh, no, but really what it came down to was uh, a couple of things. One is that the UFC was progressively getting bigger and bigger guys. I mean, and, and they, they could fight. I mean, it wasn't a bunch of fat boys. You know, it was a bunch of 240, 250-pound guys who could, could really throw. And, you know, and I walk around at about 200, you know what I mean? So it was like, you know, the realist, you know, I'm like, all right. 
you know, this is going to be a tougher, tougher deal. And, and they weren't paying a huge amount of money. Or, like, what were they paying the UFC back then? I, I don't know what everybody paying, but I, I remember everyone being upset with me because I, I did, like, I got paid five grand, and everyone was mad at me because I got paid more than everybody at, the, at that level. At Think that, about that. that. But the single combat matches, you know, and so I think most of them have gotten paid like two grand or something like that. And and so the the uh, and the, the rules were no headbutting and biting. No, 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 no biting. No, no rules. No, it was you could bite. You couldn't yeah. bite any. Well, no, you could, there were no rules. You, you could, could bite. bite. Oh, I thought you couldn't bite a fish hook. No, but no, you know no. better than me. I don't no, know. no, they they started initiating the no fish hook, and um, I think after UFC, um, might have been UFC five, UFC six. They had a kung fu guy that I was supposed to fight. He backed out. My favorite guy. Wait, was it uh, the white tiger or whatever? No, 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 no. Uh, that was my favorite guy, by the, the way. Kempo guy. That guy was all, the the fucking. Keep carrying. I mean, uh, Keith uh, uh, Hackney. Keith Hackney. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was bar none my favorite <laughs> fucking guy. Dude, I'll be honest. That guy was tough as shit. Uh, no he shit. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, listen. That's the guy yeah, you don't want to fight in the yeah, bar. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's that's the guy that you look at. Who you are? He's a you know he's a bodybuilder <laughs> wannabe fucking clown. He comes at you like this. You start laughing, and he whoops your ass. I mean, you know what I mean? He's he a tough son of a gun. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, he was, he was a nice man too. I liked him a lot. But uh, we should have him on the phone. Okay, he'd be great. Absolutely, get him. Come on, okay, thank me if you're out there. He he was uh, yeah he was really a uh, tough guy and. Um, but so that's not who you're talking about. No, no, no. There was a, uh, it was a, some other company. He 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 only made it on the oh. ultimate show. Uh, he fought a Canadian. Was it Jason pro something or Silver? Something? No, no, I don't remember. I I I, I wouldn't even remember his okay, name. Okay. I remember his face, but his name. Anyway, so he was fighting an undercard fight, you know, like a, a challenge match or something, or uh, one of the um, um, alternate matches. I'm not yeah. sure which it was. And he uh, was fighting this pro wrestler from Canada, and. Uh, somehow, I don't remember how the cut happened, but he had a cut on his, the guy was on top of him, and this guy reaches up into the cut and just starts tearing. Oh, nice! And nice. so, yeah, and so, you know, and I, what a, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, it was like what a fuck stick. And then, um, but, so like, right Mark after Kerr, that, I mean, Mark Kerr was putting his chin in guys, uh, you know, eyes and, wow. and like, I mean, that's like that wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a fucking wrestling. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that, you get that wrestling, you get that kind of stuff in wrestling. You know, but you know, to to maliciously, I always look like this. You know, you know. In fact, like Bob Meyer was, used to get pissed off at me. He was a former owner of uh, the UFC when it was uh, Center, for, Center for Entertainment Group. He get mad at me because I I, I would sit there, you know, and back then, okay, the guys were too one dimensional. Okay, so like not not everybody could strike and wrestle. Well, I was a good striker and a good wrestler, right? So so most of those early matches were pretty easy for me because of that, and. So I got on top of these guys, and I'd be like, look at him, going, hey, dude, you got to give up, because you ain't going to move me, you know what I mean? And I'd hit him, and I'd be like, hey, give up. And I'd hit him, and hit him, and yeah. then finally... You try to save them from themselves. Yeah, because, I mean, i got to look at myself in the mirror, man. I'm not going to do something I'm ashamed of. And, and, and right. so, Meyerowitz used to be pissed off. We, we'd go, he, he'd sit there and go, dude, I can't believe you, you know... You know, he's like, I can't believe you'd be like, like the, you know, you gotta stop being such a pussy. I like, be careful, Myra. You're the one in there. Unbelievable. I go, I go, you be careful what you say to me, because I don't give a fuck if I ever show up here again. You know. Yeah. Is that what you said to him? Yeah. And I was like, you got, uh, he was a dick. And well, uh, a scumbag wanting you to be, you know, this ain't the fucking the home and empire. Right. Yeah. Of course. Well, that's uh, yeah, and and like I said, if 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 if, if somebody wants to do that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's their, that's, that's they gotta live with themselves. Yeah. I'm just not gonna do that. And so that's what really happened. And the funny part is, is like, you know, the, the whole UFC thing, the original, okay, this is where people are not mistaken. In the original UFC, the very first one, there was no biting and there was no eye gouging. All right? And they challenged these guys. But as soon as that came out, all the death karate guys, every, I mean, I swear to God, all of them goes, well, you can't attack the eyes. I mean, that's, a, this is not, no, I'm like, if your entire system consists yeah. of me poking you in the yeah. eye, I don't know, all I can oh, imagine is them going around going, doop, little, yeah, little, 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 little curly and, and molar. And yeah. right? So that was their argument. I swear to God, you, it was on the karate magazine. Well, you know, it, it's not really because I can't poke in the eye. And I'm like, uh, seriously? You know what they forget, too? If that shit's allowed, then you can do that too. too. You know, yeah. like guys who say, "Well, I would just use a gun." Yeah. Well, guess what? Stuff I like that. Have I mean, a fucking shit. gun too. You know what I mean? Come stuff on. like that. Stuff like that isn't. I mean, I've been in street fights. So I've been gouged. I mean, I've 
lost some of my vision because of it. It didn't stop me from killing the guy, beating the shit out of the guy. Yeah, and make you even more. Yeah, yeah maybe you maybe hurt the guy. Now you're three and zero though. Well, you're cutting this guy off. He was about to tell you some nice good stuff. Please, sorry about that. Okay, but what, no, who just, cares? <laughs> no, 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 what I was saying, what I was going to finish up was, is that the all the death karate guys and everything like that. So after UFC one, they all complained about that. So after at UFC two, they took all those out. So that's why people thought there was that rule. But after UFC 2, they said, oh, well, we'll, we'll do it. And, and it's funny because all the death karate guys, all the death one, they got crushed. They got crushed by a sports guys. You know? Because I keep telling them, I said, listen, you know, sport martial arts, yeah, it's not death, it's not death match. But it's more close to a death match than you know, simulation bullshit that they do. Right. You know? And that's why you got crushed. Because you guys don't fight. Right. You know, you don't, one, you're not in condition, as we know. Fighting is a different condition than practice, right? You know, you got to be, you know, really do it. And, and, and that's why the wrestlers want guys yeah. like Mark Coleman, who never boxed a day in his life, crushed guys. Why? Yeah. Because he's a badass wrestler with three, four hundred, five, six thousand wrestling matches. I mean, he wrestled more than me, and I had over 400 wrestling matches, you know, growing up. You know what I mean? I mean, so he probably had a thousand of wrestling matches. Right. Those are a thousand fights. Thousand yeah. more experience than than, than the, those schmucks that yeah. you know do you know lift arm and block here when the stiff arm knife attack comes yeah. and, and so you know that was probably the most enlightening part about the thing the UFC changed the way we do martial oh arts oh my god yeah and yeah, and because and, and, and I used to say it myself like I did karate and I had karate guys that go like and I wrestled. And I go, dude, I just take you now. They go, well, I'll sidekick you. You sidekick me now, I'm still here. So what's gonna happen when I grab your leg and slam you on the ground? Right. You know, and, and, yeah. and so, you know. Because there's a lot of hypothetical shit and not, you know, you seeing it over and over. Yeah. You're getting experience taking the guy down. You know what that feels like. Oh, yeah. But they, they imagine the shit. Let's be honest, man. I, I wrestled for every karate. And even when I was a good, like I was a badass karate guy. I mean, I still wrestle guys. I shot in. Did a split single, slam them on the ground. Yeah. Nobody ever got up and kicked my ass take, after that. Take the Nobody damage. did. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. And so, you know, so the thing is that, that, that that's probably the coolest thing about old school, you know, the old school game. And the difference between like the old school game and the new game is the fact that the old school game, I don't glorify it because the athletes are much better today. I mean, if we had no rules today, we'd probably take guys out in body bags. But the, the thing is, is that, because no one knew how to train for that shit. I mean, how do you train for freaking no rules, no time limit, against a guy who knows how to but fight? there were also some very good athletes back then. I mean, Coleman was well, oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm, oh, no, no. I think the athletes today would, do, would, would, would win today, too. I mean, you know, I was one of those athletes back then, and I was, you know, I, yeah. I, I was at the beginning and to the, to, you know, and I fought all the way through to the, to, to the, M, the MMA rule. I went from NHB to, to MMA. But I think the difference that, that, that the real difference in, in whether you like it or dislike it is the fact that you had to finish fights. And see, the, 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 the one disappointing part about that I don't like watching in these matches, yeah. and same thing with jiu-jitsu matches and stuff oh. like that, is that these guys don't try to go for a finish. Yeah. They go to win the rounds, and they go for points, yeah, and, they, and stuff like that. And so, you know, uh, and, and, and that, that, so the reason that it's so much different is because you didn't have a time limit and you had to finish the guy. It was gonna go forever until somebody got stopped, right? Yeah. So that changes the dynamic of the game up a tremendous amount. Then, okay, I'm gonna go for 15 minutes. I'm gonna train for 15 minutes. I'm gonna get a decision one way or the other. So it changes that. It's not either, it's not better or worse, it's just different. Right. So when guys sit there and go, oh, this and this, and which is better, I go, it's apples and oranges, you know what I mean? I mean, they look a lot, it's like rugby and football. It looks a lot alike, but a little different. But also, I mean, don't you think also, uh, you know, I mean, you were training to have fights sometimes three times in a night. Yeah. Like that in itself Plus you didn't is, know, you didn't know what you were fighting. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you signed up and it was like, oh yeah, we got, you know, and then, and then they go, then they make the announcement. Everybody's in. Okay, we got a, we got a jiu-jitsu world champion. We got a, a boxing world champion. We got a kickboxing world champion. We got a shooter world. You're like, oh shit. Now I got to prepare for this, and you know, and like you're fighting in six weeks, you know. So you're like, yeah, you, you know, choosing you guys and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, so, yeah. So you're like, you know, it's like I said, you made the comment about my cut, cutting my hair, right? You know. Well, I wasn't worried about my hair against the other guys, but then when like the tournament, Art Davies, you know, calls me up, and goes, "Hey, guy, you, you, we want you in the tournament." I go, "Well, who's in it?" He goes, "Well, uh, you know, we're not right. Art, tell me who's in this. Come on, I've been right. around." He goes, well, you know, we got, you know, Royce Alger, two-time World Cup champion, two-time NCAA champion. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, we, you know, 
they had uh, uh, NCAA world shooto champion. I'm like, oh shit, you know. And, and we had Christoph Linninger, you know, three time national judo champion. I'm like, oh, well, these guys don't screw around. Yeah. It's time for a haircut. Right, <laughs> right, right. Because I'd be slung around, I'd be slung around by like a doll, man, you know, by those guys. Yeah, if you can look up, if they have on YouTube, you can look up one uh, fucking guy who was grabbing up the beautiful long locks that he <laughs> had. Who was that? Uh, what was his name? Uh, I can't even John, remember. Uh, Michael, uh, Watching that fight, and I was, I was like, God damn it, let the guy's fucking hair go here. Yeah. Now, your fight with Boz, yeah. uh, was that one of the toughest guys to figure out? Was Boz Rudin just because it was... No. No, I, well, I know how to be Boz. I mean, it was just a matter of the rules. I mean, Boz is just a great athlete. He caught me in a kind of a funky heel hook kind of thing that... Um, but did the boots, yep. the, the Hick James boots, man. They, they well, the problem, yeah, the problem is when you have the shoe is that when they get your leg, you know, you're, you're, you're you know. You're also, you were wearing uh, knee-high platform boots. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck else are you going to get? He'll hook it, see, he, he's screaming that. Yeah, well, the shoe, yeah, the, the shoe really is, was the uh, the main problem. It, who it, it who got made that shoe, a floor shine? <laughs> no, they were just wrestling shoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> they were wrestling shoes, but that made it, yeah. But Boss, you know, you know, Boss's deal was, you know, like, you know, which he's actually Buzz is a much better martial artist than he was back then because he didn't know how to wrestle back then. So I mean, he spent most of the time on his back for that match. I thought the Randleman fight. I thought Kevin won that fight. That was a uh, Boss versus Randleman. Yeah. I'm gonna tell Boss that you said. I, I don't care. Uh, you can tell Boss. You said that. I, I, have, Boss. I have nothing but respect for Boss Rutten. Yeah, I still think, I still like think it. It Kevin Randleman like it. won that. Who do you think won that fight? Well, God has to soul Kevin Handelman. But if Boss is here, Boss. <laughs> boss Handelman. <laughs> Who do you think won that fight? You know, I'll be honest, I only caught part of it. And the part that I saw, because I was actually there, and we were in the back, you know, and I, so I didn't actually see most of the fight. And I've only seen parts of it outside of that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, the thing is, Boss, you know, like I said, Boss took the like the damage on the thing. So I, I, I would say, yeah, if you looked at who took the damage on right, that, right. Boss definitely was one who took the beating end of that. But uh, I always, like, you know, I almost intentionally didn't ever really look at it because a boss is like, like a dear friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. And and I didn't really want to ever like say yeah you lost or, or not right you know what I mean yeah. and and you know so so I, I kind of intentionally didn't you know like I said we I I wasn't there for it because like I said we were dealing with our own issues that night you know with stuff after the fight because that that was a championship fight and we were you know last fight and we had to deal with our, our athletes that were competing you know we had to take care of them and so the fight was over by the time I kind of got back into it. And uh, so I didn't do it. And again, like I said, everyone was like, boss didn't win it. And I was like, well, you know, like this. And so I kind of like, yeah, I, I didn't want to avoid it. You know, I, I, I get it. And that makes boss sense. Boss is my brother, you know, so. That saying. makes sense. Now, the Lion's Den, what was training at the Lion's Den like? Um, well, you know, I, 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 it's funny, I'll tell you my experience with the, the tryout, the infamous tryout. It was, um, it was actually kind of a. I met them at UFC 3, you know, because they had me fly out there because I said, I got to see this stuff in real life. And you got, man, dude, it was, it was a. Uh, yeah, like it was a circus. I mean, Chemo had a bunch of freaking juice bag douchebags there that were just like dangling. Well, yeah, the, the the cross. The cross. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, yeah. That, that was later. Was that, that later? That, that that came in the event. We're talking like okay. at the hotel. He had oh, okay. fifteen or twenty cronies. There, a bunch of big fucking douches. And they were giving you a hard time. Or like honey to well, giving everybody guys. a hard time. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, but I thought he was a man of God. Well, I'm sure they all were, but they're all yeah, they're all a bunch of hypocrites, is what they were. And uh, oh God, I, God, I'm gonna pretend he didn't say that. Go on, go on. God will forgive me. Whether he forgives them or not, I don't know. Right. But uh, I can't believe you said that. But uh, but anyway, so and, and then of course the Gracies, you know, the Gracies were all, uh, you know, had the flare up too, you know. So everybody what do you mean by the flare up. Oh, they were. Uh, oh hell, man, when chemo ran back in the thing. The whole Gracie clan and all the guys, they were going to go to war. They were going to beat up everybody. Literally, I remember going, you're out of your minds, guys. You're going to go attack this, their group. And they're like, they disrespected us. And I'm like, uh, this is America. And I said, this is America and this is the South, okay? Yeah. You look Mexican. They're going to shoot you. <laughs> but, but, but I thought I you said that the Gracies had the clan with them, so. <laughs> the not, not the Klu Klux Klan, the Gracie clan. <laughs> the Gracie clan. And so, but, oh, I didn't know they had a clan I still think well. they don't think the Gracies American history. Don't you think the Gracies would have beaten up all these juiced up Roy heads? Uh, probably, yeah. But yeah. You know, but it would have been a, a, a war. Yeah, a war. I mean, it would have been a it would have been another black spot on, on uh, MMA. It's not like my brother, yeah. African American spot. Yeah, you, you, you're batting a thousand over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. Yeah, I mean it was bad enough. We were catching enough flack, bad enough. And it literally, I was it was so crazy going on there. I was like, man, I don't know if I want to be involved in this. You know, man, because I always considered myself the fighting aspect of what I did as an athlete. You know, what I mean, I I I like the rules. You know what I mean? I, I like it just because my own sense of power of, of, of coming decency. I. 
I like to think of myself as an athlete, not as a, not as a, a killer. Right. right. Yeah. And so, the um, and what hotel are you guys at? By the way, is this like at like, the Motel Six where this is going? No, on? no, no. This is a really nice hotel. Um, yeah, I remember I'm where it was. It was Charlotte. I don't remember the name of the hotel, but it was nice. And um, and so it was, was like uh, a head hole fan or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it got you know, so it all got you know, so it was you know pretty crazy. And so I'd actually met Ken, Frank, and uh, Bob at the uh, at the event. Like and, Bob. Um, Which one is Bobby? Bob. Bob was with their father. Oh, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, I saw Bob's it. Yeah. Him. And so, and I said, hey, listen, you know, I got. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I go. I've been asked to fight in this thing, I've agreed to fight in it. I go, I'd like to come out and train you guys and have an assessment of what I'll do. I go, I've had a ton of fights, but I've never had one with no rules. I've never had one with no time limits. I go, everyone says it's a street fight. I go, it's not a street fight. Street fight is some dumbass who doesn't realize he started to fight with me. I punch him in the face and I go home <laughs> yeah, before yeah. the cops are in. That's yeah. a street fight. Yeah. Everybody is a street fight. No, it's not. Because I've never fought anybody in the street and I've had more than my share of street fights who could knew how to fight. Right. Okay? So, and if they did, they never got a chance because once I realized it was going to be a fight, I punched him in the face and I knocked him out. Right? right. So, it, it wasn't a street fight. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? This is a 30-30 cage against somebody who knows how to fight or is supposed to know to fight. And so, I'll be honest, I didn't sleep good. So I, I, go, I go, I had not slept good since so I agreed to do this. You know? right. And I need to make sure that I'm not going to get killed. And you were doing it strictly for money? No, I was doing this because I wanted to win it. I wanted Because I, I was going to leave fighting anyways. I was like, you wanted to test this, yourself? Yes, I, I basically wanted to make a mark. I was like, you know, uh, it was a bit, at, the, at the time, for martial arts, this was the biggest thing going on. I mean, kickboxing was basically dead. You know, K1 was picking up, but nobody knew what K1 was in America. No, I no did because I was, yeah. you know, I was a kickboxing fan. And there was nothing going on in martial arts. Boxing was it. There was a lot of, I knew, hey, I could win this thing, and I could win this. No rules, you know, a real kumite type thing. Oh, yeah. And I could retire and get on with my life, you know, and, and have a real life. And then, so, it just, you know, turned out that I got another fight offer and another right, fight right, offer. Right, of and course. Ten years later, I decided, hey, I better grow up and get a job. And I'm 36 years old. But, uh, but anyways, um, so, th so that's how I met them. And so they said, yeah, come on out. So I, I went out, um, I literally defended, I had to defend my t championship of kickboxing. And then that night I left, the next night I left and um, went out to uh, Lodi and uh, met, met with Bob and them. And, and it was funny because I didn't get any sleep. I had like three hours sleep and I was being driven around by Bob. And finally we meet up with Ken and we're in the Dewey's train this, this warehouse. And what's Ken like? Uh, Kevin was cool. I mean, you know, he was he's quiet. Ken's quiet. You know, I mean, Frankie was the was the one that was a pisser, huh? Yeah. But Frank, yeah. Frank, Frank, Frank wasn't there. He was actually in Japan at the time. Okay. Oh. And so you playing Pancras already? Uh, yeah, he was already doing Pancras, and he was he was training at the dojo there. Ah. And so, um, so I was there, and uh, I met the crew, and then so Ken's like, hey, you know, would you be interested in um, trying out for the team? And I was like, I didn't really think about it. And I'm like. Yeah, why not? Because I never really had a, you know, I, I, like in kickboxing, I, I formed my team. I mean, I got my trainers, I got the people. You have to try out. For yeah, and team. so, yeah, so I was like, uh, he goes, yeah, let's do this trial. I'm thinking, all right, what, what's it going to be? Yeah, so I said, yeah, sure. He goes, all right, we'll go ahead and get dressed. And so, you know, and this is on three hours sleep. So Ugh. I go get dressed. It's freezing, freezing guys. It's freezing cold, right? And so I'm in, you know, I'm in sweats and tights and my wrestling shoes. And he goes, all right. Um, Start off uh, with 500 squats. I go, what? 500 squats? Yeah. Oh, no. Three squats. 500 Hindu squats. I'm like, oh, here we all go. right, I never did that. I go, oh, how oh, bad no. can that be? Right? So <laughs> I did it on his girlfriend on Instagram. Oh, all right, oh, go on. Don't get me started on that one. All right, cheeks. go on. Go on, go on. So we did 500. I did 500 leg, uh, squats. Oh, man, my legs were fucking dead. Uh, yeah. And, and then <laughs> like I did 500 of those. And then, and then I'm like, okay, what's next? And he goes, he goes, <laughs> he goes 500 sit-ups. I went, what? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, so I'm, I, I'm, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, so I'm like, all right, no big deal. So I, I go, you know, I'm not gonna back down, right? You know, what I mean, not, not, this, no, not, not that I agree with this. So I do 500. Sit the funny part was, I sit there. The guy was holding my legs. He was, you know, making sure I didn't cheat. They had a guy holding so your legs. Go, what kind of shit is this? He's holding my legs for my sit-ups. And so I sit there and I go, and they say go. No. I go flying out there. I'm doing all these sit-ups, man. I'm like, God. and I'm doing so, I'm like, I can't, my stomach's about to explode. I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, how many I got? He goes, 35. I go, what? <laughs> I go, 35. I'm thinking, oh, shit, man, like this. So oh, I, got, I got done 500 of those. I go, what's next? 500 leg lifts. 
I'm like, shit. And they just sit in there watching. What is this? They sit in there watching. This, this, is, this, is, this is, is the CrossFit or the Lion's Den? Yeah. Let's right, go let's on. Try it. Wow. And then, and then I had to do 200 push-ups. Oh. And then I had to run a mile and a half. And I had to walk. The funny part was the kid who was sprinting me, he goes, he was getting mad because, like, I was, like, I, I, I was acting like I was scared. I was dying, but yeah. I was acting like this ain't shit. Right. Like, this is all you guys got. Yeah. You know? And so we're running, and I had to run a mile and a half, like, in 12 minutes. Like, easy, right? So, After but my legs are shot. After yeah, all yeah, yeah. Well, my legs are shot. So I'm trying to take it easy, right? So I'm running, and this guy kept going, You better hurry up. You're going to get his coffee. We'll get my watch. Well, I'm fine. <laughs> he kept getting pissed off. And so we ended up doing that, and then I have to fight after that. Okay, so that's I what Vernon. I thought was about to happen. That's <laughs> so, crazy business. That's so, crazy shit. So I'm fighting Vernon White, you know. And oh, the, the tiger White. The tiger, the tiger yeah. White, and uh, the White Tiger. But it's not well, white. he was. Yeah. Well, no, he was the off White Tiger. All right. <laughs> He's the Chocolate Tiger. Yeah. And and our Chocolate Tiger. So so it's funny because like Kim goes, okay, we're gonna fight for 15 minutes. I was like, oh, okay, fuck. All right, so. But you know, I'd watch Vernon Mayer and I realized he couldn't wrestle, so I said it's gonna be under. But so, he's full strength. He didn't yeah, have to do, do any of the show. Oh my and god. And so 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 we get going and uh, and it was funny because they started going, All right, listen, if he gets you in something, you can tap out, but just don't quit. Alright? Tap out, just don't quit. What does that mean? Meaning tap out, but don't like say I had enough, right? Right. Because they stand you up. You had to fight fifteen minutes. Didn't matter how many times you got tapped out. Oh, right. okay. Okay. I had okay. to fight. Oh, you know? god, you? And so we start off and I'm like I'm like, they think this, this guy's gonna kick my ass. I guess, and and uh, I caught Vernon with a liver punch, like about two minutes into it, he went down. No way. Yeah, yeah. And so he gets up, he gets going. And again. you know who Vernon was at this point? Like, you know, no, no, I didn't know any of these. But guys. he probably wasn't nobody. No, 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 yeah, he was. Yeah. He was fighting Pancreas, but yeah. he, his, the only guy I knew was Jason Delucia because of the UFC. That's who I was thinking yeah. about when you said. Uh, Kung Fu guy. Oh, Jason. I was yeah, thinking because yeah, yeah. he, he was kind of like a good-looking kid, like yeah, yeah. like like Italian kid. You yeah, know? yeah, Delusia, Yeah. Well, come on, yeah. Yeah. Marong. <laughs> what is this? Oh, for justice, for Hakari. Right. Right. Okay, so okay, we'll so, make so, it so, over here. so 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 anyway, so we had a fight. And like I said, he couldn't really wrestle, and uh, so I, you know, I just used my wrestling basically over power. But I remember like they were like, it was funny because then it started going instead of like trying to cheer me on, they're trying to cheer Vernon on. No way. Yeah, like, come on, Vernon. Yeah. And then so, at one point they go, you can hit him when he's down, because I mounted him, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I looked over at Vernon, and I was like, I leaned over, like, I was like, I was like, hey, dude, I'm worried, I'm going to hit you. Is he wearing headgear or no? No, no. Come go, on, my brother, so you I, think they're going to have headgear so, after no, this story? So, so I leaned over and I go, I, I leaned over and I go, hey, dude, don't worry, I'm going to hit you. I'm get this. I lean up, and Vernon punches <laughs> me from the oh, oh, no, I'm like, dirty motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, well, it was open hand. Uh, it was open hand, uh, little dick. But he open hand right Still. in the face. I'm like, really? <laughs> so, so I started going to town on it. And, uh, and and so the thing was is there, there was a clock in the back of the thing, right? It was this obscure place. So I kept looking at the clock. And I was like, oh shit, 20 minutes has gone by. Do I tell him that 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah. Gone by? And literally, I went for over 35 minutes. Wow. I, was I was so sore. I literally couldn't train for two days after that. So after that, you were part of the team. After that, I was part of the team. Now, uh, now your first fight against Tito. Did you know how good Tito was? Or? No, I didn't know anything about him. I knew he was a wrestler. I knew he was a state champion wrestling, and uh, but I didn't really know uh, much about him. But, you know, in all fairness, Tito and the stuff. You know, he was hanging around a bunch of clowns. You know, with Tank Abbott's people, but you know, he wasn't a clown. He, he was a really good fighter. But how much was that like rivalry between you know his team and or, and, and the and the, the Lions Den? Was that that was on? There was nothing really going on with that. Okay. I mean, yeah, the fact that you know. Uh, you, know, you had uh, Tank, who was always just causing the trouble for everybody. You know, I mean, he was just a walking trouble. Man. That's hard to believe. I know. <laughs> but didn't, but didn't Tito have a shirt saying you were his like guy? Yes, no, that that happened in UFC 19. Oh, UFC 19. That well, because he had a, he was like he was killing everybody, and he, that was the one guy that fucked him up. Now, but now, when, he, when he's wearing that shirt, are you just like fuming? Did that get to you, or did you laugh at it, or? You know, uh, I don't know. It's like one of those things where like I was like. Seriously, dude. I mean, fuck, you know. And I, you know, I, I made a bad decision on taking that fight. You know, a couple of things. One, I'll be honest. I underestimated Tito. And you mean uh, the second time? Yeah, the second yeah. time. Because um, as much as everything things like the the, the the fight where I caught him, I was like, I was never hurt. I never was in danger. I mean, as much as you know, he had hit me with those knees. I mean, it was just like I was never hurt at that thing. You know, and there was I, I was just like. I'm not gonna have a problem with this. And, and I didn't train the way I probably should have. And, and to be honest, I was kind of I was sick, and 
and I just underestimated. I didn't think I'd do it, and, and I paid the price for it, you know. And, and um, you know, and, and so I, you know, it's, it's weird, you know. I mean, Tito and me are. I mean, we're not blood brothers or anything, but it's funny because we sit around and talk about our kids now. And, oh, nice. Oh, you're you friends know. with Cheeto? Yeah. Wait, where do you, where do you live these days? Well, I live in Dallas. Okay, but you you yeah, I run into them. You know, yeah. I do different events. I will run into them, and so. You know, and it's funny how time changes things. You know, I of think course. you guys got I think a lot of Tito. I think a lot of Tito's would probably want to do things differently. You know, if he did, you know, things. I think he, he he got an appreciation for you know what it took and and respect uh, that it took to do it. I think that he didn't really have it first. Now you fought. I mean, some legends uh, out of between Vanderlei Silva, Chuck Liddell, Sakuraba. Who who was the, who was the best guy you think you fought? Oh man, I mean. I, It, it, uh, you know, it's so tough to put because he, I mean, he's brought something different, you know, and things. like Chuck, you know, I mean, he was one of the toughest guys I fought, and he was the hardest hitter. I've never been hit that hard. And, uh, and in fact, I've never got actually knocked out. I've been hurt a couple times, but I never got knocked out. He knocked me out. Uh, and he could take a shot. I mean, I knocked him down in the fight. I heard him so I remember times that the fight. That's a barn barn. Yeah. That, that's yeah. a I knocked one. him down. I knocked him down. I think I, yeah, I knocked him down once, but I heard him several times. And he still came back and got me. So, you know, I, I say he was my toughest guy. Yeah, he was by far the toughest guy I had. Um, but, I mean, um, but, you know, you look at, like, who I think was the smartest fighter out there. You know, Sak Sakuraba by far was the most clever fighter out there. He was the most dangerous. You know, him, and, you know, as, as much as, uh, you know, they, the whole bullshit with that thing, you know, it's like, I was a spoiler. They, they brought me in to lose. You know, they gave me two weeks to go on that fight. Oh, they did a lot of squirrely shit. Uh, that I did, I believe it or not, I had the flu and a broken foot on that thing, and and but they gave me so much money. I said I fight anybody for fifteen minutes, and that was the deal. See, they didn't realize the contract. And other guys said the contract was one fifteen minute round. There was no, I mean, no overtime. You make a decision. But they were trying to set up the whole Sagarabo versus Royce Gracie deal, and suddenly he loses to me, and they changed. They change everything up, right. there, which is typical over there. You know, they, they don't have a boxing commission. Well, what do you think about like Amanda Nunez last week pulled out of her fight because she had mucus? She had a problem with like mucus. You know, I mean, do you think these guys or girls now? It's just, it's just like, would you ever pull out of a fight day of the fight? I've never pulled. I, I, I fought in times where, like I said, I, I should not have taken the fight with Tito because I wasn't I wasn't feeling well. That Sakuraba fight, uh, I you know I literally was recovering from the flu. Um, that's me. I, 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 I'm not going to put my judgments on other people like that because I don't know what was in her head, right? You know, I don't know what it is. Now, on the surface, I'm thinking she probably committed, you know, job suicide now because she's going to have a tough time. She's going to have to have amazing fights to get back on the card on the thing because she's become unreliable. And, you know, the one thing with, with me, uh, I was never scared of anybody. Cause I, I figured I could figure out I could beat anybody. I can figure a way. I, I, am, I am have no delusions about how great of a fighter I am, but I'm one of the smartest fighters out there, and I understand my skill sets really well, and I know how I can, and, and, and they're varied, and so I, I always figured I could figure a way to beat somebody. So I was never fearful of fighting somebody. So it didn't matter who I fought. I, you know, and as they got better and better, and of course as we had more film and stuff, you know. It was easier for me to figure out because I could figure a guy out. Okay, this is what I got to do. This is what I got to do, and um, so to me, you know, with her pulling out like that, you know, it's like, you know, it, it wasn't just you because I don't need to like who did something else. It's just no, she has well, we don't know. I mean, they, they were cleared. She was cleared, from my understanding. She was cleared one, not once, but twice by the by, by the medicine. So, you know. But you know what, the problem is simply this, is that they're putting their life on the line. And, and, and that sounds, people like trying to make that sound like it's dramatic or something. Yeah. No, you are. Yeah. People die in the sport. People yeah. die in, in, in yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. Your life, every time you get punched in the head, you know, and I'm, believe me, I'm a functionalologist now, your life is shortened because of that. And so if you're not feeling up for it, and your financial life, you know, sometimes, you know, like, you yeah. never know. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing with Amanda. That's why I, I wasn't going to, like, everyone was so mad at her, and I'm like, you know what? We don't know what's wrong with her. And, yeah, Before you jump on, I, I, plus I, I talked to so many fighters, and I'm like, hey, you know, this one lost yet. Oh, I went in there with a broken rib. Yep. Oh, I went in there with a hurt shoulder. Yeah, the I, I went yeah, in there with an the ACL. Yeah. I'm like, well, why didn't you? Well, I need the money. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. she, if she doesn't need the money, then you know what? Good. Good well, for her. Well, 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 also, like I said, 
I don't know what was in her head, so it's hard for me to make the judgment. And to be honest, like I said, most people that are most critical, now there are going to be people, fighters, that, most people that are critical never had the guts to step up anyway. So, right. you know, so like, you know, when, when you sit there and, you know, you, you get this beer belly fuck because you suck I'm like going have you looked yourself in the mirror lately sir oh, <laughs> I mean God last weekend I was at the fights and uh, uh, Angela Hill was walking out and uh, you know I was cool I got to take everyone five while they were walking out and then yeah. he's like you're gonna lose right nice. and then Angela's husband gave him the middle finger as well I was like I was, but who would yell you're gonna lose as they're walking you know so many of those that, that that's why sometimes I unless I got dynamite seats I prefer not to be at the fucking fight or if you know if somebody well, I don't like be like, at the fights because these either, fucking yeah. guys is drinking Bud Light and talking shit and oh, you know, yeah. kick him in the balls yeah, and do, I mean, do this stuff you the, 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 the amount of douchebags yeah. and even that you know it's funny because even some nice people suddenly get in there they get a couple of beers they get yeah. in there and they become douchebags yeah. and you're like you know it's like it's the Roman mob dude I mean you know I mean I'm a historian but you know yeah. but,